Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Dot Products Lengths and Angles. My name is Mr. Joshua Davis and I am the Math Healer. Let's get started. We're looking at trying to show that this triangular figure here is a right triangle and we're going to use vectors in order to prove that. Here's the problem. Show that the points where P is equal to 7, 4, Q equals negative 5, 0, and R is equal to negative 2, negative 9, form the vertices of a right triangle. So for the purpose of making it easy to follow this, I'm going to ask you to pause the video at this moment and to copy the problem and the diagram. I will assume that you just paused the video and that you copied the problem and the diagram. Let's move forward, ladies and gentlemen. So the beginning of the solution. From the figure above, QP and QR appear to be perpendicular to one another. Let's go back and take a look. Yes, they do appear to be perpendicular to one another, but we will now have to prove it. So again, starting with our solution here, from the figure above, it appears that QP and QR appear to be perpendicular to one another. Move on to the next page. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is what we know from the basic laws that govern the behavior of the dot product. If vector QP is perpendicular to vector QR, then by the law of dot products, the dot product of vector QP with vector QR is equal to zero. So again, if two vectors are perpendicular, when we take the dot product, the dot product of those two vectors should be equal to zero if those vectors are perpendicular to one another. We will use the following form to write vector QP and vector QR. Given a general vector V, it can be written as x2 minus x1 times the unit vector i plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 times the unit vector j. So i is in the horizontal direction, j represents the vertical direction. Notice that these coordinates here, using the x sub 2 and x sub 1, that just gives us the length along the x-axis, y2 minus y1 gives us the length along the y-axis. So again, x2 minus x1 gives us the component length of this vector along the x-axis, and y2 minus y1 gives us the component length of this general vector along the y-axis. We are given that Q is equal to negative 5, 0, P equals 7, 4, and R equals negative 2, 9. So vector QP is written as 7 minus a negative 5 times the unit vector I plus 4 minus 0 times the unit vector J. QP, vector QP, is now equal to, in the, the x component, 7 plus 5, times the unit vector of i, plus 4j. Finally, vector qp is equal to 12i plus 4j, where i represents the unit vector along the x-axis, j represents the unit vector along the y-axis. Well, ladies and gentlemen, vector QP can also be written as follows. Vector QP can be written as this triangular coordinate type of thing. 
you look at it, this gives us the vector notation of QP. So when you see this type of notation, this is a vector coordinate. This gives us the magnitude along the x-axis or its horizontal component. 4 gives us the magnitude of its vertical component. So this is written in vector coordinates, which gives us the magnitude of the components of QP. We now have to write vector QR. So vector QR is equal to negative 2 minus a negative 5 times the unit vector I plus negative 9 minus 0 times the unit vector J. Vector QR is equal to negative 2 plus 5 times the unit vector I minus 9J. Finally, Vector QR is equal to 3i minus 9j. But QR can also be written as in vector format. So QR in vector, in vector coordinate format can be written as 3 comma negative 9. So remember the 3 represents the magnitude of the horizontal component of vector QR. Negative 9 represents the magnitude or, and the direction of the vertical component of QR. So this is vector coordinate notation. Now let's go back and look at the property or the definition of the dot product. Let the general vector V be written as V1 and V2, and the general vector U be written as U1, U2. Well, the dot product of vector V dotted with vector U is equal to V1 times U1 plus V2 times U2. So let me say that again. Vector V dotted with vector U is equal to V1 times U1 plus V2 times U2. So using this definition or property, we now have that vector QP dotted with vector QR is equal to the vector 12 comma 4 dotted with the vector 3 comma 9. Remember that this is vector coordinate notation. These represent the magnitudes and the directions of the component of each vector. So we're going to do the dot product of these two vectors. So vector QP dotted with vector QR is equal to 12 times 3 plus 4, negative 9. So the x components, they multiply, plus the y components multiply. And please remember that dot products represent scalar quantities, meaning they do not have a direction. Vectors not only have magnitude, but they also have direction. So a scalar is just a number and a quantity that does not have direction. So a dot product is a scalar property of these two vectors, and it does not have a direction. So vector QP dotted with vector QR is now equal to 36 minus 36. Vector QP dotted with vector QR is equal to 0. So using the definition or property of dot products, we have just demonstrated that vector QP and QR are perpendicular because their dot products is zero. So QP is perpendicular to vector QR because the dot product of vector QP dotted with vector QR is equal to zero. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please let me know if this video instruction was clear, easy to follow and understand, and if I moved at a good pace that was easy for you to follow and comprehend. Thank you for joining me. My name is Mr. Joshua Davis, and I am the Math Healer. Have a very good day. Thank you for joining me.